I bought this Intel motherboard for around 60 bucks. And this thing literally saves me a hundred bucks on this build because it's DDR4. And this is an LGA 1700 motherboard, which means it's compatible with 12th gen Intel CPUs, 13th gen and 14th gen out of the box, every single one of them, but also to the current best value CPU ever you can buy. And these are notebook adapted CPUs to desktop, which are Orion Express. And I just made a dedicated video about these. These, I think, are the absolute best thing you can buy right now. It's basically a laptop i9 sold to you for like 150 bucks, which you can overclock on a locked motherboard like this. But again, check out the full CPU video for that. And uh, I hope they're not gonna be sold out too quickly because every time I make a video like this, now that my channel is growing a little, I find I cannibalize the market because you guys listen and you guys buy those things. And then people comment that they're not that price anymore. Which is why, by the way, I just dropped uh, the possibility to become a member where you will see videos before they drop. And so if I suggest a deal or if I make a short about the deal, you will see it before and maybe grab it before the price goes up, which unfortunately I can't control. I'm happy if you guys follow my advice. But back on topic, this motherboard is an absolute best buy right now in 2025 because it's currently the cheapest one on AliExpress for LGA 1700. And with the RAM shortage going on, but even without it, I think right now Intel is the best value choice on the low to very low mid range, meaning PC like this, a PC under 1000 bucks. Ryzen is basically non-competitive currently because Ryzen on AM5 is only DDR5, okay? Which currently you can't get for good pricing, but even where you could get it, Ryzen is not the best in multi-threading and the 14th gen Intel does beat it. So if you are after the used market to buy 14th gen Intel CPU, like I showed on many builds on the channel before, you need a motherboard and motherboards are actually harder to buy on the used market. I, I made a video, by the way, about what to buy and what to not buy in the used market, but they are also a little bit more expensive, whereas CPUs, you can get very good deals on, for example, a 14700K. So onto this motherboard, what do you expect to get from this? Honestly, not a whole bunch. You open it up and there is nothing inside the box, just the motherboard, one SATA cable and the IO shield, which is not even integrated in the motherboard, okay? You get nothing with it. It's a dual slot motherboard, which means better RAM overclocking than a four dim slot motherboard. This is something a lot of people don't know, but if you get two slots, it's actually better than four slots. It's DDR4, which is what we need. And we actually get quite a lot of NVMe slots, three pin headers, fan headers, three RGB headers, two NVMe slots, two RAM slots, enough fan slots, four SATA ports, which hopefully you're not gonna use, and a pretty decent IO for the budget. This is actually better equipped than if you go ahead and buy, for example, an H610 motherboard from Gigabyte or MSI. The motherboard also has an HDMI and DisplayPort output in case you have a GPU with integrated graphics, which I have here today. I find going on AliExpress is generally the better option compared to buying a very cheap, brand new motherboard on Amazon from a lower end chipset. I think the B chipset is probably the best value one. How is the BIOS in this thing? Actually very complete. So those Chinese companies like Huanansi has been around the market for a while. I've had countless builds with those. I used to do Xeon builds with those back in the day. If you if you're one of the three people who was watching me like in 2021, 2022, but now they have seriously improved their BIOS. And uh, since this thing also comes with a 2.5 gigabyte LAN, it was adequate to have a decent BIOS. It also finally starts in English, whereas Qingyue, the other motherboards I think are very good. They start in Chinese still, but of course they open on the prompt, so you can just hit enter and switch to English. Very complete BIOS, you can control the secure boot, TPM, overclocking, RAM overclocking. DRAM overclocking is very different from what we used to in uh, name brand motherboards, but it's everything is there. It's just uh, the way they have Put it into the BIOS is a little bit counterintuitive, but it only means you have to spend like a few minutes extra to go through all the options in the BIOS. Like you don't have to do anything else, just go through the options. You will find anything. I literally overclocked an i9 1300HX, this one over here, on this motherboard easily. And uh, yes, it's a locked motherboard, but it's unlocked for RAM overclocking. You can do undervolting on it exactly as I show my tutorials, which you should do if you're buying a 14th gen, 13th gen Intel CPU. And it actually has decent VRM. So I did check them with a thermal imaging camera and they handle the i9 fine. The heatsink is not fake. It's very thin, but it does increase the surface area by quite a bit. And now the only problem I think with this motherboard is of course it's small. So you can't put it in a big case. It's a micro ATX motherboard. They do it to save money. You want to put it in a micro ATX case, compact case like this, where it looks like it's filling out the build. It's white, which I think 
looks decent, the PCB is decent, the heatsink is quite nice. And for the RGB, you don't have a software, you have to use like Signal RGB or some kind of open RGB, any kind of open source software. You can control the trip in the headers. It's not going to be the prettiest looking, but it's going to work. You can also always just put an external controller and just be done with it, but it's nice to have the RGB connectors on board, which again, some name brands motherboards do not do. To save costs. Now you're probably wondering, should I buy an AliExpress motherboard? And uh, the main question is about warranty. When it comes to DOA products, dead on arrival, you are covered, okay? They replace my product a bunch of times because about one in 30 comes in broken, okay? Not motherboards, but like general products. But I find on motherboards and CPU they tested pretty well. I've actually had only two broken motherboards in about 50 I bought, so it's pretty good ratio. And they always replace them. Of course, they're gonna ask you to send them back, but they're gonna pay for you to send them back. And as soon as you send them back, you're gonna get your money back. So warranty is decent. If you have problems after the dead on arrival, you can't expect to send it back like you do on Amazon, but you still have warranty. And I find they will actually help you. And if the motherboard is broken, and if you complain hard enough, they will actually refund you or give you another motherboard as well. Of course, asking you to send it back. So as long as this motherboard is at around the 60 to 70 bucks price, of course, utilizing coupons on AliExpress, the usual stuff I say on the channel all the time, this is fully, fully recommended for me. And I tested it with an i9. The full build is also gonna be on the channel. I don't really need extra VRM cooling like you do on other motherboards. But as usual, I want to hear what you guys think. Have you ever tried a Juan and C motherboard before? Are you maybe running one in your computer right now? Let me know down below if it is good or if it is bad. And as usual, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.